Hey, John here. Let's talk about defining variables and procedures for our PostScript programs. So let's fire up our favorite interpreter and see what happens. All right, so there's a couple of things you need to know to do this, and that is you need to know how to declare a name of something. In PostScript, what happens is if you put a slash followed by what you would think of as a variable in any other language, you know, the name of a variable, which is a letter followed by more letters and numbers, for example. That is what Postgres refers to as a name. So the slash followed by that name is, is, the, is a name. And if you put that in your program, you'll see it puts a, a, a name called X. Whatever you just said, it goes on the stack like that. It, just like it would if you put it 52 or something on there. So let's go ahead and put a 52 in here. So what I have now in the stack is I pushed a name and I pushed a, n a number. Okay, these are both, you know, more abstractly thought of as objects. There's a name object and then there's a number object, an, in an integer number, okay? If you then say def for define, what def is going to do is it's going to pop one object off the stack and think of it as a value. It'll then pop a second object off the stack and think of it as a name. And it will place that name and that value in what PostScript calls a dictionary. So what I've just done is defined a, 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 a name called X. And I've assigned it a value, which is 52. So now anytime I put X in my program, instead of X going on the stack, I get the value of X from the dictionary placed on the stack, all right? Now notice when I say X here, there's no slash. When I say X up here, there is a slash, all right? This is because I need to be able to put the name of X in the stack and have a way to do that that's independent of saying, go get the value of X and put the value on the stack, all right? So that's the difference between the slash and the no slash. And now you've got a way to define a variable. So let's get rid of it off the stack and print it out right now. So now my stack is empty. If I wanted to, I could say X, X, add, or anything else I wanted to do when I placed the values on the stack, right? So now I would see the sum of 52 plus 52, and it's 104. That makes sense, right? So let's, oops, clear if I could spell correctly. Clear the stack. All right, so let's put a 50 on the stack instead. I can redefine X to be another value by simply just executing that again, right? So now if I put X on the stack and print it out, we can see it's 50. And just like the add, I can say something like X 20 move to, right? I can then say 100, 100 R line to, which prints a 45 degree angle line up and to the right. I can then say stroke to draw it, and we should be able to see it over here on the page, right? and show page, of course, will clear the page we saw in the previous video. So that lets us put symbolic names for values, which helps, but what if I want to add 50 to it? Well, then what happens is I need to define it as itself plus 50, like this. All right, so this says put a name on the stack, put the value of it currently on the stack, add 50, and then take the 50, the 100 now would be on the stack, and put that back in as a new definition. Okay, so let's look at this one step at a time. Put an X on the stack, right? Now put the value of X on the stack, all right? Put 50 on there. Now what's going to happen when I say add? Well, add, by definition, pops two things off the stack, sums them together, and pushes the, stump, the sum onto the stack. So now I've got an X and a 100, and when I say def, I just defined X as 100, replacing the previous value of X. So now we should see that X is 100. It's as simple as that. So to add 50 to X, you say define a new X as X 50 add def, just like this. 
Oops, <laughs> that would add 500 to it. <laughs> if we wanted to add 50, we would do that, right? Now we know we just did this once before and it's 100. Now, X will be 150, so that you just keep doing this every time you want to add another 50 to it, right? So now it'll be 200, 250, and so on, right? There's my 250, not a problem. All right, so let's look at another kind of thing we can define, right? Now, what happened here is as we went along, the add 50 to X was executed in the middle of our definition, right? So we put a name on the stack. To put a value, we used its old value. And by the time def got executed, the new value was calculated already, and the sum was put on the stack. Now, let's say instead of that, we wanted to say, let's say we're going to say draw a 45-degree angle. All right, now this is going to do more than just put a number in there. This time, I'm going to put an entire uh, snippet of code. So it would be like a subroutine, or what PostScript calls a procedure. In this case, I can put a curly brace on, this, on the input stream, right? You'll notice I didn't get my, a new prompt. It wants more data. So what's going to happen here is I'm defining an object whose value is executable code. All right, so let's, how do we draw a 45 degree angle line? Well, I have a new path, right? And then we could say like X, uh, say 50, move to. So now what we're gonna do is we're, 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 gonna, we're gonna create a subroutine that uses the value of X for the X coordinate and 50 for the Y coordinate. And we're gonna go there. Then we're gonna say 100, 100 R line to which will draw a 45 degree angle line up and to the right. Then we can say stroke like this. And we hit close curly. Now there's two items on the stack. None of this has been executed yet. What we've done, because we never got a prompt back, right? This open curly in the close curly down here tells GhostScript to take everything in here and put the whole thing on the stack as one thing. So if we look at the stack now, we have the name object here, and then we have another object here. The value is an entire bunch of code. So if I say def now, what I put in the dictionary is an entire bunch of executable code for the name of draw45. So up here, when I put an X, if I just put X on my program, it puts the value of X in the stack, right? Because X represents a single operand. If I put draw 45 here as code, it'll look it up and it'll find out there's an entire executable procedure to be executed, which itself includes more variables and so on, and it'll execute all this stuff instead of putting it on the stack as an operand, okay? So let's see if it works. Yes, it did. Now, if we want to, we can add 50 to x, and then we can do another draw 45 and so on, right? Well, that's pretty nifty. So now I don't have to keep typing all this code in all the time. I effectively made a subroutine, right? Well, let's look at another kind of subroutine that might not be super obvious right off the top of your head. And that would be a subroutine that adds 50 to X, right? So let's say we say ink X, in this case, we're going to go ahead and do this whole thing, but notice we're inside a curly here. All right? Define that. Now, every time I call ink x as a subroutine, it's going to do this. So if I put ink x right here, it's going to look up what ink x is, and it's going to execute this definition, which at this time will add 50 to x. All right, then I can do a draw 45, another ink X. In fact, I can just do this like this on one line. And now every time I do this, I can, oop, it would need another space in there if I executed that. But I can just keep going like that. All right, so now you've got subroutines, you've got variables, and you've got a uh, 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 a, a subroutine or a procedure that itself redefines a variable. So then you add 50 in a procedure. 
So the big takeaway here is this whole curly brace thing, all right? You know, throwing a name and a value on a stack, that's easy enough to understand. And, and this, I hope, is easy enough to understand in that you're just executing code like you do anywhere else in PostScript. But once you put a curly brace in the input stream, you're not executing this body of code here, right? I mean, that doesn't make sense. How can I keep adding 50 every time I say this if when I define the body of the code inside these curlies, if this code is executed during the definition, this would have already been reduced and it would have then made inc x equal def some number x. So that's why GoScript and PostScript does not execute the code in these curlies when it's expressed during a definition, okay? It, it executes it later when you ask it to go find an object from the dictionary with this name and handle it. If it's a procedure, it executes it, right? Like these guys. If it's just a variable like X, it... it can't execute it, it pushes it on the stack. That's what it does to execute that. So that's the two different types of definitions that you see very commonly used in uh, PostScript programs. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye.